Mr. Raza, what country do you come from originally? I come from Pakistan. I lived there uh, my uh, youth and studied there. And in 1978, I left Pakistan, uh, fearing the rise of extremism, okay. which came about during the reign of uh, General Ziaul Haq. He imported uh, the extremist message from uh, Saudi at that time into Pakistan. And women started covering up, alcohol was banned and other forms of extreme Islamic ideology crept in. Most Americans are not aware that the son of uh, Professor Judea Pearl, Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street Journal uh, journalist who went looking for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in Pakistan, were they helped? Was uh, uh, Al-Qaeda helped by the ISI? Absolutely, yes. And that is the sad part, the mullah, the clerics, the mullah and military alliance. The ISI is also uh, disunited in a certain way that the official version uh, may, may be something different, but they are splinter groups that definitely help uh, uh, terrorist organizations because they use them in Afghanistan and they use them in Kashmir. So it is to their advantage to keep them happy. And Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was one of them. And Danny Pearl did an excellent job in investigating. Actually, he went uh, with a friend of mine, Asra Nomani, also from the Wall Street Journal, a Pakistani. And uh, they did a terrific investigation uh, into Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. And uh, eventually, it ended up in not uh, very pleasant circumstances. Why, in your view, did they behead Daniel Pearl? Uh, the first reason is because he was a Jew. And the supposed animosity between uh, Judaism and Islam, which does not exist, even in the Quran it does not exist. And the sooner the two work together, the better it is will be for the peace in the world. Uh, that is the one reason, because he was Jewish, because he was American, and it, they wanted to make a statement, and they did. Uh, you started off claiming uh, that they killed him because he was a Jew, but the Quran preaches otherwise. But uh, what's the wider held belief towards Jews in the Muslim world? The wider held belief is that of total ignorance. A person who's spouting hate against Jews and Israel I can bet you anything, he doesn't even know where in the map Israel is or what is the history of the Jews. It, it comes through total ignorance, this animosity, and it plays into the hands of Muslim politicians, whether they're in the Arab world or in Pakistan or Malaysia or Indonesia, it plays into the hands because that is the supposed enemy. And it is very easy to build a hysteria and a mob against Israel or the Jews. So President Trump has uh, declared that he's cutting support to Pakistan. Hasn't Pakistan been one of the primary uh, benefactors of American foreign aid over the past 20 years? Yes, and uh, one of the better words to describe Pakistan would be a frenemy, a friendly enemy. So uh, Pakistan has always played a double game it has taken aid from the United States of America to build its military. But on the other hand, it is also uh, in the game of appeasing uh, terrorists or terrorist organizations to play its own politics vis-a-vis -vis India and Afghanistan and Iran to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. uh, who is A.Q. Khan? A.Q. Khan is the father of the nuclear program in Pakistan. Uh, he stole nuclear secrets from the Netherlands and went about to Pakistan to develop a nuclear bomb. And a lot of people don't know that when we talk about North Korea and we talk about the nuclear program in Iran, it is A.Q. Khan that has sold nuclear secrets to both North Korea and Iran. It's and been, it, it, hasn't it been referred to as the Islamic bomb that, uh, that originated in Pakistan 
Uh, where did he spread it within the Muslim world? Well, he wanted to spread it more into Libya, into Saudi Arabia, but he was stopped and brought into check. Now he is considerably restrained, but the damage has already been done. Israel just revealed that they uh, were responsible for destroying the Syrian nuclear reactor. Uh, if they hadn't, and that reactor in Syria had fallen into ISIS's hands or nuclear materials, what would uh, the, the, the prospects for nuclear terrorism have been? Yes, when you talk about ISIS, you are talking about a totally mad and evil uh, existence of a group of people. So your imagination, my imagination, or the viewer's imagination can be as drastic as possible as to what would have happened if this scenario would have uh, materialized. It would have been complete chaos. Because you must understand that organizations like ISIS revere death, whereas we, the people who have some sanity, revere life. And that's the difference. So they would have had no qualms into uh, uh, dropping an atomic device on civilian population, on children, women, etc. So it would have been a complete disaster, doomsday scenario. Mm -hmm. How prevalent is uh, a, a jihadist, and by that I mean a, a political, global, Islamist mentality, how pro prevalent is that within uh, Pakistanis and other uh, area, uh, subcontinent uh, uh, Muslims within the West today? Well, I personally, although it, it has grown substantially, uh, this uh, ideology has taken 40 years to uh, gain strength. Uh, it's a result of a turf war between Iran and Saudi Arabia and it has come into the West uh, by immigrant uh, population from various countries. But my personal view is that we have reached the pivotal point. We have reached the height of jihadist mentality. I think the general Muslim population is sick of it now. They want their children to get a decent education, for them to learn a decent li earn a decent livelihood. And all these uh, idiots that uh, emerged in Miami and San Bernardino and New York, etc., are being looked down upon rather than looked up to as heroes. They are villains, and the Muslim population is realizing it. And the sooner they realize, the reverse can start happening. So I can recognize what you're saying is, is true about. Uh, about violent jihadism, but how about political Islamism? Is that still a force within the West, and I say uh, the UK, for instance, and uh, the US and Canada? Yes, Dr. Daniel Pipes said it beautifully. He said, it's our duty now to save the United States, Canada, and Australia. He seems to think that Europe is already a gone conclusion. Uh, yes, the jihadist mentality uh, reigns over there. It is deep-rooted. Uh, it is uh, uh, very uh, harmful to uh, living with other uh, ethnicities, ethnicities co-workers, neighbors. It's a dangerous trend. And that's the non-violent extremism. And that has to be brought into check by the governments. It's incumbent on them to take a serious note of this. And this is a deep-rooted ideology which is exported by the Muslim Brotherhood, which in, in collaboration with the regime in Iran is exporting this ideology into the West. So on the one hand, people are getting sick of it. On the other hand, it's creeping in at a faster pace than the governments can take a check of it. What, what sort of activism do you do in your family? In my family, we have a policy of the three E's, expose, educate, and then uh, empower people to eradicate this problem. So we set up forums, we set up uh, exhibitions to expose this. 
and we've been to the governments in Canada, we've been in the United States. Uh, my wife is instrumental in uh, educating uh, the police departments, uh, uh, defense departments, and the government at large to advise them that you have to do something not about the violent extremism, but the non-violent extremism as well. What kind of uh, personal threats do you face from the uh, Islamist establishment? Well, first of all, they try to negate our message by saying they are not even Muslims. And when they fail to, uh, to achieve that, and then they resort to more uh, direct threats. Uh, but if you are scared of these threats uh, and pack it up, then you've lost. If you, even, if, if you are even intimidated by these threats, you've already lost. So that is not something we even consider. Mm -hmm. are, are you in competition, essentially, with, uh, uh, to the authorities, with Islamist or pro-Islamist advocacy groups? Yes, of course. Uh, organizations like CARE, the Council for American Islamic Relations, is the problem. And we want to make it very clear they are not part of the, uh, the solution. They claim to represent Muslims, but they represent only the wrong kind of Muslims. And uh, they, they are the villains in this day and age in the United States. And they have a sister concern in Canada, which is just as worrisome. Uh, how do you feel about the monitoring of mosques in the West? The monitoring of mosques? Yep, because currently the FBI doesn't do that. For a long time they haven't done that. Is it time to uh, monitor what's going on in the mosques? I have no problem with that. If the mosques have something to hide, then they will uh, try and stop you from monitoring them. If the, if the mosques are really a place of worship, that they are only there for spiritual reasons, to worship God, then what is there to hide? If there's no political messaging out there, then why be scared of anybody monitoring them? I would welcome uh, the mosque that I go to if people come and watch what is happening there, because I myself raise alarm bells if the message is not spiritual but political. Uh, so how does it work now? A Saudi uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman comes to North America comes to the White House and claims, well, we're reforming uh, 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 our society. Women are getting to drive and we're letting them go to school. But uh, what, what kind of influence do they still have over mosques throughout the West? Yes, in Saudi Arabia, the, uh, the political system is divided into two. The Wahhabis look after the religious aspect of uh, Saudi Arabia and the Saud family looks after the political uh, reign of things. So uh, the two are sometimes on a collision course. Uh, Prince Salman is brave enough to challenge that notion and I wish him all the success because if countries like Saudi Arabia are, uh, are, uh, are saying openly that, hey, this is not the kind of Islam that should be followed, that means what we've been saying for 20 years, since 20 years, is true, because he's acknowledging the fact, and I wish him luck, and I fear for his safety, because uh, Saudi is not a very, uh, lack of better words, a peaceful society where it comes to disturbing the honest nest of, of religiosity. So I, I wish him all the luck, and if he's successful, then the rest of the Islamic world will follow suit. Uh -huh, but what about their interests in uh, spreading Wahhabist uh, influence throughout the West via the mosques? That is a very good question and that is what has been happening. Uh -huh. And if he can put a stop to that, then we are getting near, we are nearing to a solution. But if it's just words say and uh, he's not really, uh, doesn't want, uh, doesn't intent on keeping that or challenging the Wahhabis, then we have a problem. But I think, if he's, I think he's serious enough that once he challenges uh, the Wahhabi establishment himself, it'll tone down. How can people follow your work if they'd like to keep in touch and see uh, the, and learn from you? We have a website, www.muslimsfacingtomorrow.com. You can always give, uh, go there, leave your comments, and follow what we are doing. 
And just one word of caution that uh, once uh, the Wahhabi message is brought under control, we still have to worry about Iran and the Muslim Brotherhood. And I think uh, Western governments should declare the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist entity that will put more pressure on Iran to, in lack of other words, behave. Uh -huh. Would you support uh, the U.S. making a preemptive strike or Israel making a preemptive strike against uh, Iran's uh, potential nuclear weapons? It's very difficult to answer that because uh, uh, a strike was made in Iraq. Iraq is a completely different uh, country. Iran has its own infrastructure and it will be rather difficult to make such a strike. Uh, but I think uh, what needs to be done is for Western governments to encourage putting down this murderous regime in Iran by empowering people of Iran, as they were doing a few months ago, then it died down, is to come up and face the challenges and get rid of this regime.